It's been a month of lives ripped up, a generation driven out, certainty torn apart. A month that we've been here, seeing the heartbreak of the sick forced to flee, but compassion too of hearts and homes opened, of the democratic world standing up to the aggressor. Four weeks on, the only change is warmer weather. The arrivals keep coming, seeking safety from a war some don't understand. Welcomed where Poland can put them, this a school, a smile for the kids at the ready. Inside, volunteers bring comfort after an exhausting journey. Yulia Kirienko and her sons fled Kiev, her husband staying to fight. Children were killed and teenage girls were raped. We had to leave. They were shooting at the cars as we tried to escape. We prayed as we drove. It's good here, but we want to go home. I just want this to end. The trauma on the youngest could take years to show and last a lifetime. Olga Oleshko's little ones already feel it. They were asking why helicopters were flying, why there were sirens, why people were dying. I had to explain it in a way that didn't hurt them. At the start of the invasion, we watched as panic prompted the immediate first rush to escape. But these are the people who didn't want to leave, thinking they could stick it out, that the bombs might stop. But they didn't stop, and more than three and a half million refugees later, there's a growing feeling of the long term about this, with all the challenges that that will entail. Destination Warsaw, whose population is up by almost a fifth, new arrivals given ID numbers and school places. They have a journey to safety, but their country still has no passage to peace.